Hello everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts and today I'm going to be creating five mini pop-up vases, but I did create five of each design so I'm actually going to have 20 total pop-up vases and these are really cute because they're super small um, and I thought that they would be a great pop-up design to mass produce because pop-ups do take a lot longer than a traditional flat card but because these are mini vases they didn't take much longer at all so i decided since i'm going to be mass producing that it would be much faster for me to cut my decorative panels as opposed to using the two solid dies from the pop-up vase die set so here i am cutting all of those decorative panels these are one by one and three quarter inches and i cut 80 total panels here because 20 times four is 80. Each face is gonna have four panels. And I mentioned that I made five designs. I technically only made four, but one of the designs, I kind of switched up the outlines on the tulips so they look a little bit different. So also going along with mass producing, I decided to do my die cutting ahead of time. So I cut 20 pop-up vase panels. Now, if you wanna create the full-sized vase, you would have to cut 40 of them. But because I wanna make these mini, I just went with 20. And um, I did not cut the bridges because they will have to be adjusted. The size will be different. So a little bit later, I'll show you how I cut the bridges. But here I'm showing you all of those panels that I cut with my trimmer and they are sized to the same size as those decorative panels. So if you're not making quite as many, definitely use those dies because it'll probably be faster. So for my first design, I'm going to be using these outline tulips. All of the products that I'm using today are by Scrappy Tails and I will have everything I used linked down below. But here I am showing you that some of the outlines on the tulips are cut from white cardstock and some are cut from black. And the way I layer these together is I add glue to the outline and then I find its coordinating shadow layer and glue the outline right on top. And because I just went with white and black outlines, it made cutting very quick. And I did die cut all everything for all 20 cards ahead of time. And I'm gluing now everything at once. As you can see, I have quite a lot of flowers on my table here. I ended up not using a lot of the white ones. I really preferred the black outlines. So I did use up all of the black and then I didn't have enough black to do all five. That's why the yellow vase has kind of two designs because three of them I did black and two of them I did white. So I was left with quite a few white ones that I can ha use on another card. So for my second mini vase, I wanted to create a cute little Easter scene. So I'm gonna be using this Spring Essentials die set. And here I'm showing you how the eggs layer together. I cut the solid egg from white cardstock and then the two decorative eggs I cut from yellow and blue. So I have two eggs that I'll have in each vase. And then I have some butterflies, which I cut the outlines from white cardstock. I layered them onto some pastel colored cardstock to um, add a shadow behind them. And here I'm just adding the centers of the butterflies, or I guess the bodies onto the wings. And then for my third design, I decided to go with all purple roses. So here I'm showing you, I went ahead and again, these are outline images. So I glue the outlines on top of the shadow layers. And these are really beautiful. And then you also get two different types of stemmed leaves. So I'm showing you, I have a couple of those that I cut out. And here I'll show you how I layer the outline roses on top of the um, shadow layers, which I cut from light purple and then the outlines are obviously from dark purple, so it's a really pretty tone on tone look. And I really love this for the tulips as well. I have quite a few videos on my channel showing the tone on tone outlines for the tulips. And then for my final design, I decided that I wanted a vase full of leaves and baby's breath. So I have some white and gray baby's breath and then a whole bunch of leaves out of all the designs, I was left mostly with leaves. I did end up using all the eggs and the butterflies. So 
yeah, I, I just like to die cut more than I think I need because there's nothing worse than having to stop what you're doing to die cut like a single item. So I don't mind having leftovers. And then for the leaves, there are only two that layer together. So there are two outline leaves and here I'm showing you me gluing the outlines onto the shadows and everything is die cut glued and ready to go so i'm going to prep my bases now so i'll show you one of each color but know that i did create five total vases per color so i'm starting with the purple which will go with the roses i just added some atg tape behind those panels and i'm gluing them onto the card base and then here I'm showing you what I plan on putting with that particular base. So this is going to be all roses. And then for my blue one, I plan on using this vase for my Easter egg scene. And I'm only taping these panels to one side of the base. I'm not going to bother decorating the other side because you're not going to see it. But I will mention that I was inspired to create these mini vases by a Scrappy Tales design team member. Her name is Teresa Plunkett, and her blog is called Lollipots and Polka Dots. Really cute. Um, and I'm consistently inspired by my own team. I, when I designed the vase, um, did not intend to create mini vases with it. I had no idea that you could. So when I saw Teresa create them, I was like, I have to make these because they also look like really cute table settings. Of course, they do fold flat and fit inside of an envelope. And I did try to see if they would fit in an A2, but they were just a little bit too tall. So if you make yours slightly shorter you will be able to mail them in an a2 envelope but the reason i'm making 20 is because i do plan on giving all of these out to my design team members at the time i was filming this i was getting ready to send out design team packages for the march and april release so um, i thought that these would be a nice little addition to say thank you for everyone that's on the team and creating beautiful projects for scrappy tales so now that all of my panels are prepped and they have double-sided tape on the tabs, I went ahead and folded them together and I just did that by creasing all of the score lines and attaching each end together and it is a very small skinny base. In fact, you don't really even need, I mean, I do want to advertise my product here, but you really don't need the pop-up vase to create this. Um, you can very easily get your scoreboard out and um, create the score lines yourself because it's just a little square as you can see here. Um, here I'm creating the bridge and the bridge is half an inch by two and a half and I scored them at half an inch and at two inches. To create a half inch tab on each side of this bridge I added double sided tape to each tab and I decided to glue my bridge at a diagonal inside my mini vase here but you're going to see that this is not the best way to do it. I would just recommend gluing it across the center of it because um, as you can see, it's kind of bent in the center. So you'll see, I figured that out on the last design. I'll show you a better way to add that bridge in. But here I am adding some stems to my tulip heads and I calculated that I had three for each vase. So I decided to attach all the stemmed tulips in first. So I glued one to the front of the vase, one to the bridge, and one to the back of the vase. All right, and now I'm going to try to add more colors that I have not used yet and stick them lower down in the vase. And I'm going to just gradually fill the entire vase with my different tulips and I am pulling in some acrylic sticks to pop up some of my tulips and have them hang outside of the vase and I get those from clear scraps they are 12 by 12 sheets that I cut down into half inch strips and I just add them behind some of my tulips I decided that I wanted more green, so I took some leftover leaves from a past video and added them throughout the bouquet just to add another pop of color. 
Here you can see I'm cutting down some more acrylic strips. Some of them I even cut into very skinny sticks just to conserve as much as I can. You can definitely use packaging instead, but I do like these because I create a lot of pop-ups. And you can see that I'm using my art glitter glue here. I would not recommend it if you're gluing sticks into your vase because it just isn't a strong enough glue. So if you do want to add popped up elements or like flying elements, I would highly suggest using three in one glue. And you're going to see in my second vase that I'm going to switch over to that. But if you're just gluing paper on paper, obviously the art glitter glue would be fine. So this is the completed bouquet. And just to finish this card off, I die cut a whole bunch of thank yous. And this sentiment came from the Slimline gift card holder add-on. You get a whole bunch of different word dies. So I went with thank you for all 20 of these because as I mentioned, they're all going to my design team. And then on the back of them, I will hand write like a little message. So yeah, that's gonna complete the first design. And here I'm gonna show you how the white outline tulips turned out. Let me know which one you like better. I definitely prefer the black, but I think both are very cute. And don't you think that these would be adorable little place settings if you had the name kind of popped up in the center? So here's a close up of the tulips. Now we're moving on to the purple rose design. So again, I'm folding my mini vase together, just attaching the ends. And then I will add my bridge in. Again, I'm doing it diagonally, which works, but you can see that I just bend the center of it, which is not very ideal. But I am going to add some stems to a few of my roses some of them I did not bother to add stems just because I knew the roses were going to completely cover the majority of the bottom part of the vase. So the ones that I do add stems to, I will glue them towards the front of the vase. So here you can see that the art glitter glue is giving me trouble, especially with this rose. I will struggle with it for a while before I finally just pull out my three in one. These roses are quite big. They're much bigger than the tulips, so they're heavier. And the art glitter glue is just not strong enough to keep them from being top heavy. All right, so my first two roses are in. And here's where I realized that I don't even really need the stem. And I might as well kind of keep that leaf to accent later and fill in the areas with. So I added this rose to the very back of the vase. And here I'm trying to fix that top heavy rose again. And at this point I have switched to three in one, which is by far my favorite glue for pop-ups. I'm gonna glue this small one right to the front. And then I think I add one more large one to the back. So I'm taking another acrylic stick, gluing the front to attach one of my roses, and then I add more glue to the back of the stick and glue it to the back of my card base. Right here, I'm just gonna actually tear the leaf. Well, I guess I add another rose kind of to the back, and I like to fill it outwards. I love seeing the bouquet slowly get bigger and bigger. And because it's a mini vase, you can really go all out with it. You can add so many flowers and it will still fit in an envelope. So here I'm just accenting a couple of these roses with more leaves and eventually I do add more. Um, once I finished the other four, I had a couple left over so I went and filled some of the more sparse vases with more greenery. So here I'm attaching my white thank you. I know it's kind of hard to see. I wish I kind of went with black on all of them, but you can pretty much read what that says. And I really like this one. I love all of them. It's hard to pick which one I like the most. But yeah, here you can see the vase with more leaves added in. 
So we are now moving on to the baby's breath vase. And I always like to start with my larger elements first and glue them right in the center. So I added a large viney leaf from Assorted Leaves as well as this baby's breath cluster. And this is going to be the only flower I add to this design. And my team really loved Assorted Leaves, so that's why I went with a vase that was all leaves. I normally would try to throw in at least one flower into a vase like this, but the team members did an awesome job at really making the assorted leaves the focal point on all of their card designs. So I was very inspired by them. And I went with a more non-traditional color scheme. So all of my leaves are blue and green as opposed to yellow green. And it's just a very fresh looking design. That's the only way I can explain it. I love how tranquil it looks with all the blues. And I did cut the baby's breath from white and gray, so I'm adding the gray baby's breath to the back of the card, and I do like the two-toned look of that. It's really hard to pick a favorite, but I'm, I think this one is my favorite. So I'm just filling everything in, trying to disperse the different blue-greens so that, you know, it's not all one color in one area. But once I add like my larger elements, it's very easy then to go in and kind of fill the blank areas with smaller leaves. Some of them I glue right to the baby's breath, some to the card base, and then others, as you can see, I am popping up with the acrylic sticks. And I am moving the sticks at a diagonal so that the bouquet really goes outside the vase. So I think I'm finished with this one. I'm going to add a black thank you. And then that will complete the third design. And then for my final one, I'm going to create the Easter egg scene. And this one actually looks like a scene as opposed to a flower bouquet. So here's a close up of the leaves. And here we are on to the final design. I am attaching my vase together. And here is what I would recommend for your bridge. Remove the double sided tape and just stick it right in the center of the vase. Don't make it complicated because this way it doesn't bend in the center. It's just perfectly in the middle. Here, I do have to move it up a little bit forward. But I actually ended up adding the tabs right to the corner of the back wall of the vase. And then you get it right perfectly in the center that way. So here are my two eggs. I do wanna pop these up so I have my acrylic sticks at the ready. I'm gonna add both of them on at once. And I actually add my glue to the front of the bridge, I mean, to the stick, and glue them to the back of the bridge, if that makes sense. As just the habit that I've gotten into, you definitely could glue the back of the stick and glue it to the front of the bridge, but I've always kind of done it this way and there's no rhyme or reason. So here I'm adding in my butterflies and I just felt like it was missing something, but you're gonna see I'm gonna keep filling it up with more butterflies. I'm gonna add my tall grass behind the yellow egg and that adds a really nice texture. I love this grass. I can see it as beach grass as well. I think that would be very pretty. So at first I was gonna glue the grass in front of the egg, but I didn't like that. So I'm gonna flip it around and add the grass to the back of the bridge. That way the grass is behind the egg. So here's where I wanna dress up the front more. So I'm gonna remove that large pink butterfly and I'm going to add the fence from Everyday Borders along with the grass from Everyday Borders to kind of create like a little fence scene. And I think this ended up super cute. So I'm gonna glue that right to the front of the vase. Then I'll reattach my butterfly and then the only other thing I do to this card is add some little flowers to the tall grass. I, I do add one more butterfly to the front. And everything in this vase is from Spring Essentials. I did not pre-plan any of these. 
Um, but I knew I wanted to showcase a lot of the die sets from Scrappy Tales, so I just knew I wanted an Assorted Leaves vase, a Spring Essentials vase, a Tulip, and a Rose vase. And in case you're wondering, it took about five hours of die cutting. That being said, I had some left over, so I probably did not need a die cut as much, so if I pre-planned a bit better, I probably could have cut that down to maybe four and a half hours. And then assembling each vase took about 10 minutes. So what is that, like three and a half hours or so? So it was quite the project, but mass producing is so enjoyable for me. Once I have the designs figured out and it's just about gluing and assembling, there's something very relaxing about that and not having to think. So I really enjoyed creating all 20 of these. And here I'm gonna show you, they're all lined up on my shelf or I first, I guess I'll show you each of the designs. And I just love how cute these are because I was going to do like a flat card design because I did want to mass produce these, but I was very happy that I was able to create a pop-up design for my design team. So here I'm kind of showing you here, whenever I'm done with my cards, I always put them on the shelf to dry but yeah, let me know which card design was your favorite. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. And if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I post my next video. All right, guys, I will see you next time. Bye.